Got a hum in the background here. It's the, the power plant. Morning. Well, hello to you all. This is Saturday morning, September 10th, and uh, Steve here from Quaker Town in Quakertown, and the sun is just getting ready to peek out over the horizon at 647, and I've got appointments to keep today. At 8 o'clock I have a group of guys, not sure how big, coming over to split and stack wood. So this won't be too long. Somewhere between a mile and a half and two miles, I think. So starting at the 4th Street Park. And, according to the signs posted around, there's a free concert tonight of the David Thatcher Band. I'd like to come to that, a free concert. And I've heard of the band for years. It's a local band. We have this nice concert clamshell in this park. It's going to be a hot one though. It's already 73 or so degrees going up to 93 or 4 with humidity. So the wood splitting will be from 8 until noon. And went out and picked up a a nice watermelon made room in the fridge so it would be colder and then I had a request from my wife to get out some frozen blueberries to thaw I think she intends to make blueberry muffins for whoever shows up See a little update on things around here. Uh, my son, no news, uh, down in DC so far. So far, no news. He was told he may not hear anything for a couple of weeks. So I guess he's been told. My mother-in-law, oh, back to drama, and this is not uh, melodrama, but true drama, and that is, she was supposed to be released from the hospital 
to some place that has rehab for her. Kind of in the nursing home type of thing where she can be watched and cared for and helped. Well, everybody was telling her they don't have any room for her. All except one. And sadly, it's a local a local facility that really treated a friend poorly, kind of turned him out. So we didn't even want to bother. But we were puzzled. Like, well, nobody has any room. And what we learned was that she has to have radiation on her uh, where she had her surgery to shrink the tumor. And I, I think that the homes thought, or the facilities thought that she would be having radiation while there. And that was something they just didn't want to handle. And so everybody closed their doors on her which is a real shame. So what did they do? They sent her home to her 83-year-old husband to care for, who needs, he doesn't need care himself, but he certainly is not in great shape to assist her, and he knows it. So, uh, so Margie went over Thursday evening to spend the night and to help her mom through the night. So that's what she did. She called on a friend who was a nurse. She explained things to her and minutes later the nurse was at the door help walk Margie through how to help her mom. A real, real blessing to her lady named Crystal. So Margie spent Thursday night on their couch and then got some sleep in between trips to the bathroom, which is a real big chore. The bathroom is so narrow, she needs to use a walker for stabilization in her bad knees. <laughs> so, but it worked out. And then Margie spent the night there again last night. So I tried to get some good nights of rest myself. And here I am. So I almost slept till six this morning. Not that I don't wake up in the night. Somebody suggested to me, it's because I don't use an alarm clock that I wake up in the night because your mind is setting off alarms instead. So I'm in a quiet place this morning. I drove out after having some coffee and reading time and left Anna in a quiet house
hopefully I get back before Margie arrives. She's not crazy about me leaving Anna asleep. I'm not worried. All the doors are locked. And she's a sleeper. And she wakes up and wonders where anybody might be. She's likely to text. Say, where are you? So. All right, sun is up. The heater is out. And I'm really praying for Kelvin Reed. I saw that post the other day about slurring speech and numbing arm the doctors can't detect anything, it seems. I mean, it sounds like classic stroke. So, I keep praying for Kelvin for wisdom. He's got this Ultra coming up, and really, should he be doing that? Um, I don't know. But for clarity for the doctors, could be something that his running doesn't affect at all. But uh, it's no fun being on the end of a bunch of mysteries when it comes to your body. Speaking of mysteries in the body, so I went to the doctor yesterday. She was running 45 minutes behind. So I, I, I had plenty of questions. I could tell she was ready to need to move on. So I said, oh, one more question, one more question. I definitely wanted to ask her about my shoulder. So she said, well, you know, it could be tendonitis. I guess I showed her where it hurts when I lift or when, when things go in a weird position, what part of the shoulder hurts. Kind of the outer side. Uh, just to the kind of the outside of the clavicle on the back. And she said, oh, that's kind of, looks like it's related to the bicep. So she sent me for x-rays on both shoulders and then referred me to a orthopedic surgeon to have a look so that uh, follow-up appointment with the ortho is next Friday at 1 p.m. One of the soccer field has a sprinkler system going. It hasn't rained here in a couple of weeks. Good morning. I don't know what else. Oh, just a lot of chat. She was visually, visibly not thrilled about my experimentation with my medication. I tried to reassure her that the cardiologist was okay. I could see it in her face. <laughs> You what? You told him? You didn't tell him? You took your next? You didn't take your next? Uh.
Good times. So as far as you caring for her mom, which I love seeing her now. Essentially, sometimes she has to keep the peace. In the last couple of years, her parents pick at each other. I just talk about each other in the third person. Which is never right. So, so Margie is trying to remind, remind them of the need for grace and kindness. They could use a good dose. of Just Norm podcasts. So they can feel the love and want to share it. Because Norm has that effect on people through his podcasts. Anyway, I was thinking about Margie and the care of her mother and Carlos and the care of Mavis. Lots of patience, lots of kindness. So try to encourage my wife toward that. Try to help out where I can. I know at this point I'm not necessarily the person they want around when it's time for bath or shower. But I can stop by during the day and try to be an encouragement. So we'll see what opportunities are out there. All right, well, still pretty still out here. I've seen a few people, people walking dogs or people on a bike or just a walker. Now, the big news in town Thursday was a bomb scare. Robotic kind of a, a robo call, they called it. A bomb threat into the high school. I think there were three in the region one in New Jersey, here in Quakertown, and then maybe another a little bit north of here. So the kids were evacuated from the rooms around 9.30 or sometime after 9.30 and then eventually dismissed because the I guess the dogs smelled things they wanted to check out further so they did it was a hot day kids were just in the football stadium most of them the upperclassmen, the freshmen, are in a building by themselves, and there's a church across the street, Morningstar Fellowship. I guess they have such an agreement, an evacuation agreement. (laughs) 
and I think our our nursery school and an elementary nearby have a similar agreement. It's something I should check on to be sure. At least I know we did years ago, whether that's still in place or not. So all tests and homework that were due Friday were postponed because the students had to leave. Morning. Had to leave everything behind. Now eventually, around 4.30, and I was able to get in and get her book bag and things. But uh, not everybody could. So the principal just excused everybody for a day. Hey, you know what I forgot this morning? in my rush to get out and get a short run in. I forgot my scoosh. And I forgot a hat. And I'm wearing my glasses. All of the things I'm not normally doing or opposite of things I'm doing lately. Just because you get so Drippy. Well, I'm doing the four and a half, one and a half break uh, interval right now. And the time is 7.10. And I'm back to 4th Street Park. Just about finished up. That'll give me about 45 minutes to cool down and get a shower, or at least a rinse, before company arrives. All right, I saw Carlos got his wood pile stacked, two cords of wood. So, I hope that's all Carlos needs. Obviously, I'd say, Carlos, you don't use the wood to as a primary heat source. And I guess I'd have a mixed, I'd be mixed, or I'd be, hmm, we, we use it as a mixture. So we keep our house cool, and then we, um, heat a couple of rooms. So we use a space heater in the kitchen and a and the wood stove in the great room, our family room. All right, we are back to the car, so I will stop the timer from beeping at me anymore. <laughs> a little late, I'd say. Well, it was just the right time. All right, 2.1 miles. Fair enough. Depending on which I go by. 
It's funny how the tracking apps give you such diverse distances. So I got 2.1, 2.12, and 2.2. <sighs> All right, well, good timing. The sun is just out. There's a, uh, you can hear an airplane that just went overhead. High enough in the sky, maybe it was just leaving the airport that I was near on Monday. So, All right, we'll call it a wrap. I guess that was Tuesday, not Monday. Monday was a holiday. Oh, you get thrown off. So that's a wrap for this submission. And uh, we're glad to be out running this morning and thinking of others. So uh, keep praying for my mother-in-law. She, she may, she, we have some people kind of coming to bat for us who know the system. So we'll try to help find a place for her to go and have rehab and get her to where she can manage things herself. But I, that's still iffy with her knees the way they are. But at least they can get uh, other areas strengthened like her arm strength, shoulder strength for lifting herself up and getting some leg strength also so she can uh, seat herself and unseat herself. Um, our friend Eric and his son Wyatt. Uh, Wyatt had a G-tube put in. I guess that means they go right into the stomach, and it's both for feeding and for further chemo treatments. So they'll take out the port, I guess, that's on his chest. And so he's in the hospital for a couple of days. He was in the, quite a bit of pain. Poor guy. It's a lot for a 12-year-old. Um, wow. Looks like a dog club just arrived. Three people. And how many dogs? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six dogs. Seven dogs. Seven dogs. <laughs> Looks like five poodles and two of something else. Um, collie mix. Collie lab mix. Two black poodles. Two white poodles. Maybe three black poodles. Yeah. Five walkers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, glad to see the dogs get along. All right. Well, I need to get along. So, everybody, take care and enjoy your extra mile on this weekend. Bye bye.